Okay, this one's going to be fun. I'm going to try to download and use Freeform Create, and there are a few things you should know about me before I begin. I am not a designer. I do not know how to use programs like InDesign or any VDP software, and I do all my work in Microsoft Office applications or freeware. So in other words, if I can manage to do this, anyone can. Still, I want to do more than tack a mailing label onto a newsletter. I want to create a genuine, personalized mailing with variable text, images, and barcodes. I'm going to walk through the entire process with a quick project summary, a short design process description, and then I'll download, install, and use Freeform Create to make it relevant. Here goes. I write and publish novels for a hobby and want to create a personalized postcard mailing to try to nudge my hobby into a business. My paperbacks are more than just good stories, though. I've placed QR codes on the first page of each chapter so that readers can scan them to listen to yours truly recite the story as they read. Chapter 1. Staven. July 2nd. Mirth. Staven I think this is a unique differentiator and I want my mailings to focus on it. I'm going to segment my mailing to do this for parents of pre-readers to early readers who will enjoy following the words and pictures while they listen to my children's book. Parents of teenage boys and girls who might struggle with reading and who might find that listening while reading either my fantasy or medieval romance novels engaging. Adult men who might enjoy the immersive reading experience of Stavius. Adult women who might enjoy reading Princess with breaks to sit back and listen and German teachers who want a resource with written and spoken German and lesson plans. I've already written my variable text, downloaded and cropped some Shutterstock images using paint.net, and created a mailing list file. I'm going to design this oversized full bleed 6x9 postcard in PowerPoint. I set my slide size to 6 and a quarter by 9 and a quarter. Next, I'll go into the slide master view, open my blank layout, fill it with a solid red box, and add a 6x9 dashed box as a sort of cropping guide. This will be the front of my postcard. I duplicate the front layout and edit it. This is the back of my postcard, so I'll shrink my box to leave room for my addresses. Time to create my slides. I'll insert one of my Shutterstock photos in the corner. I'll also insert a picture of my book. I'll add a title and a catchphrase, and I'm done with the front. I'll add my static call to action text, company logo, return address, and QR code background. Now I'll add my variable data explanation block and my variable data QR code action. And of course, the address info. So after all this, I've now created a static example of one of my postcards. I'm going to save the native file and also save it as a PDF for a reference. This is what my PDF looks like. Now I'm going back to my PowerPoint file to delete all the variable content along with my crop marks. I'll save this blank master as a PDF, and I'm done with the design. I was going to show the install process, but it was not worth it. You go online, download an .exe file, and run it. Nothing to see here, but this is where it gets fun. I open Freeform Create. I open my blank PDF master and mailing list files, and it's time to get busy. Let me take a moment to show you my mailing list file. Each recipient is linked to an audience segment. There's the mailing info, my book and image picture file names, my QR codes, a title, subtitle, and first name in caps for the front, and the two variable text elements for the back. Now, back to Freeform Create. I'll drag my image onto the page and position and size it. And do the same with my book image. Next, I'll add my title, set the font size and color, and position it, and do the same with my subtitle. I look at the preview and realize I forgot to add the name and question mark to the title and forgot to center my subtitle, so I go back and fix it. Now it looks good, so I'm on to the back. I'll start by putting my reason variable in place and setting the font size and color. Next, I'll put in my static text in front of the variable. Then I'll do the same thing with my try it text. I'll add my barcode, specify that it's a QR code, and position it over my book icon. And finally, I'll put in my address block. Let's take a look at what I've built. I want to check out the longest reason to make sure it fits, and it does. 
Same with the Try It text. Now I'm going to take a quick peek at each of my segments. I sort on my mailing list segment variable, select child, and look at the page. I see the image, book, and messaging are correct on the front. Same with the back. The reason is talking about pre-readers. I check on the girl segment. I know there's a picture of a boy, but I don't know if these parents have a boy or a girl, so I just change the book and message. The front looks good, and so does the back. The boy version has similar messaging, but with a different book, and both back and front look fine. My women's segment has different messaging, a different image on the front, and a different reason on the back. Same with my men's segment. Notice men get my fantasy book while the women receive princess. And finally, my German teachers get a postcard to talk about Esvar Einmal as a teaching tool. So, I'm done. I save the .ffp file and am ready to send it to a printer. And look at the file size. It's only 32 megabytes. My single PDF postcard sample was 2 megabytes, so had I done a mail merge with 100 records, my file would have been about 200 megabytes. That's a huge difference. I love that anybody can use this, whether they have Fiery or not. I love that even a non-designer like me can pick this thing up and do something as sophisticated as this example in a few hours with absolutely no training or reading of any instructions. I love that it generates manageably sized files, and I love the price. Having said that, this is a new solution, and I found a few challenges while using it. I should add that I've already spoken to the FI team, and they're already working on remedying them. The biggest issue I found is that Freeform Create resets everything if you change your data file. People won't want to recreate a personalized mailing and then have to recreate it next month to send it out with a new mailing list. The second is that Freeform Create also resets everything if you change your master PDF file. Again, you should be able to change something in your master template without having to rebuild all the variable content. And the third is that Freeform Create only lets you see text field names in design mode. I want a mode where I can see, format, position, scale, example text in design mode. Just using the data from the first record like it does for images would be fine. Jumping back and forth between design and preview modes is time consuming. There are also some minor tweaks like scaling barcodes, adding a ruler and snap to grid, and being able to specify line spacing, but this initial version of Freeform Create is well designed and quite useful. So I am impressed with this solution and recommend that prepress operators, designers, students, and marketing managers download it and give it a try. Now all I need is to get some real data and to find a printer with a fiery server less than a decade old who is willing to give me a reasonable price on printing and mailing these, and I'm sure my book sales will take off.